Recently, I published a video containing potentially dangerous misinformation. In this video, I'd like to set the record straight in the hopes of repairing my reputation and preventing others from making the same mistake that I did. The misinformation in question can be found in a video that I published a few weeks ago about the true command. In this video, I made a statement implying that the true command always returns true, but this statement is false. To make matters worse, I knew that this statement was false at the time, but I still said it anyway, and for that I'm sorry. To illustrate how the true command can return false, consider the behavior of the following shell script. This script invokes the true command with the version flag. For the first three iterations of this script, this invocation of the true command will return a value that allows the while loop to continue. However, after the third iteration, the script executes this command, which includes a special shell syntax that closes standard output. This special piece of shell syntax indicates that the standard output file descriptor should be closed. The angle bracket character is a common symbol that's used to redirect data streams. If the number of the stream is not explicitly specified, it's assumed to have the value 1, which indicates standard output. After the third iteration of the loop, the next invocation of the true command runs and returns false, causing an exit from the while loop. You can see this result more clearly by running the true command directly on the command line with the help or version flags and then checking its return code. With standard output left alone, the return value is 0, and with standard output closed, the return value is 1. This behavior is only exhibited by the GNU Corelibs version of the true command when using help or version flags. This might seem like an irrelevant corner case, but the fact remains. Claiming that the true command always returns true is a false statement. As a society, we need to do a better job to curb the spread of misinformation like this, which is why it's my duty to make this video. In fact, I've already misinformed you again in this same video by stating that the true command can sometimes return false. In fact, the true command never returns boolean values like true or false at all. Instead, it uses integer return codes, where the value 0 is commonly used to represent success, a negative value is commonly used to represent an error code, and a positive value either represents an error code or a meaningful result. By convention, it's common to associate the integer value 0 with the boolean value true, and the integer value 1 with the boolean value false. However, outside of a shell environment, the previous statement is totally false. In traditional boolean logic, the integer value 0 is typically associated with the value false, and the integer value 1 is associated with the value true. This is the complete opposite assignment compared to the one used in a shell environment. This might seem a bit confusing, but all you need to remember is that the true command always returns true, except for when it returns false. However, the false command always returns false and never true. This is the same set of foundational logical implications that are found in propositional logic, and that's what I would have said if the previous statement was true, but it's actually false. In fact, the complete opposite is true. In propositional logic, true only ever implies true, and it never implies false. On the other hand, while false predictably implies false, false also implies true. This is a well-known fact among those familiar with the construction of rigorous formal mathematical proofs. If you begin your formal proof by including a false premise, you can not only prove what you're trying to prove, you can prove literally any result at all. Legend has it that famous logician Bertrand Russell used this feature of proofs to formally prove that he is the Pope. As the story goes, Bertrand Russell was conducting a lecture on logic, where he mentioned that in the sense of material implication, a false proposition implies any proposition. A student raised his hand and said, in that case, given that 1 equals 0, prove that you are the Pope. Russell replied immediately, add 1 to both sides of the equation. Then we have 2 equals 1. The set containing just me and the Pope has two members, but 2 is equal to 1, so it only has one member. Therefore, I am the Pope. As you can see, if misinformation is allowed to spread, you can come up with all sorts of absurd conclusions. That's why I wanted to create this helpful video to simplify the difference between true and false statements. The misinformation that I spread in my previous video is something that I'm not proud of, and I promise to do better in the future. To close off this apology video, I just want to end by saying that I didn't do it, even though I did. And even if I did do it, it wasn't my fault. And even if it was my fault, it wasn't that bad. And even if it was that bad, it's none of your business.